all of these smiling prospects and tempting opportunities were nice and fine for our beauteous heroine and thrilled her to the max. Yet, in despite of her grave misgivings about Garrett and his outrageously brusque manner towards her, something deep inside her sinful young soul, a feminal pang of compunction, perhaps, made her feel a peculiar reluctance to carry out her scheme of dumping him for the next sugar dad on the make. Why in her right mind would she wish to continue to stomach such abuse from such an unconscionable son of a sow gelder as he'd proven himself time and again to be? That was the baffling quonundrum, one for which there was no comfortably easy answer or rationally obvious solution. Whilst nervously awaiting his arrival, Melody leafed through a fashion glossy, answered some correspondence, and tidied up a few things around her flat, ought to distract herself from the niggling doubts she felt apropos of her relationship with this truant lover, her knave of hearts, as she'd come to know him. Such racks tormented her, gnawing at the very depths of her being. In her deepening self-consciousness, she preened herself every couple of minutes in front of the shovel glass, primping her hair back and readjusting her skirt some umpteen times. Seld if ever satisfied with her physical appearance, in despite of the fact that she customarily drew double takes from a riffraff of sportsmen, bluebeards, pinch bottoms, and the like, wheresoever her sleek young frame busted itself into view. She repeated her obsessive compulsive rituals over and over again, adding yet another touch of eyeshadow to her blinkers, another smear of rouge to her sweeteners, another roll of perspiration arrestor to her axillae. Garrett had urged Melody to dress smartly for the evening, as he wanted to introduce her to some colleagues of his from the brainery. She hadn't the foggiest clue who they were, or why he'd been so adamant that she should meet them. As it was, she had bosom buds aplenty who called on her night and day, Further over, she and her friend Angelique were a veritable sister team, a gruesome twosome, if you will. Angelique, who was anything but an angel, was Melody's closest confidant and intimado. Working as a court reporter at the Hall of Justice and being the natural-born tattle-basket she was, Angelique was quick to share with her friend every tidbit of gossip she overheard, notwithstanding that she'd signed a contract of strict confidentiality appertaining to anything she witnessed under Judge O'Nance's gavel. With comers like that in abundance, Melody was unable to fathom why Garrett would want her to intricate her social life any further, especially since the two of them rarely spent any quality time together. Ungooseberried, that is, by human alarm clocks, 
fire extinguishers, and so on. She longed for those precious moments of intimacy with her lover, blinks of flesh that thrilled her. Ironically, since the time back in the fall when Garrett had had his nervous breakdown, which had well most led to his self-demise, such opportune stounds had been fewer and farther between.